Good morning. Welcome back to Passionate World Talk Radio. Special edition. Ta da! <laughs> Grieving. <laughs> What's Betsy? Hi, um, Lily. Hi, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. And I really would appreciate it if you can share this show with your friends. I also want to say, Lillian, before I forget, I did shows on grieving, on chatting with Betsy, did my own chats, and they are on YouTube. So if you want to hear more about what I have to say, it was earlier this year, right after I lost Matt, check me out on YouTube. What I'm going to talk about today, Lillian, is helplessness. How many times do we feel helpless watching our loved ones die? Or, or if you have a pet and your pet is ill and there's nothing that you can do about it and you feel that feeling of helplessness. So what do you do about that? I'll tell you what you do about that. <laughs> now, I just want to put out a disclaimer. I'm not a therapist, so I uh, recommend you seek professional counseling and I'm going to give resources at the end of the show, Lillian. So Good. it's fresh in people's minds. When you can't change the situation, you have to change the way you look at the situation. And I'll give you an example. There wasn't anything I could do for Matt when he hallucinated. Yes. I gave him the medication, but there wasn't anything I could do to stop it. When he was, diagnosed there wasn't anything i could do and when you have a diagnosis of any type of dementia you start the grieving process most of us do maybe some don't and with each skill that they lose i found that i grieved some people may not but but i did so i can only talk about my experience i had to get to a point folks that I couldn't let this disease and what it's doing to Matt destroy me in the process. I had to look at it different. How can I change my perspective of the situation, which sucks, let's face it. And what I had to do for myself and for Matt was how can I best help him? And the best thing that I could do for Matt and I did for Matt was to show him love, support, hug him, let him know that he's loved and make him comfortable. Now, does that make the situation better? No, when someone's going to die, they're going to die. I'm gonna be very blunt. Or if you have a pet and your pet is going to die, there's nothing that you can do about it. Make your pet comfortable as possible. I never had a pet, so I really don't have that experience of sharing that, except the only time I lost a pet was when I was very, very young. We had a dog, I don't even remember what kind, and we had to get uh, rid of the dog because my mom was allergic to it. So it was either the dog or my mom. <laughs> so um, of course we kept my mom. <laughs> <laughs> had to add some humor here. Um, what hey, say you? He's a big furry dog and Peter Pan, <laughs> and they called her Nana. You, you had a dog? No, and the Peter Pan in oh. the book, they had a big furry dog called Nana. And while mom and dad went out dancing and doing their thing, the darlings, the big dog took care of the children. Well, I don't even remember that. What do you have to say about helplessness, the feeling? I think it comes, in? It comes in a lot of forms. And one of the things you need to recognize is that you're not in this alone. There are a lot of other people out there and other types of situations who feel just as helpless. In fact, when you lose your child or you lose a baby, you miscarry it, even though you've never seen it, you still feel helpless and you blame yourself. I remember my son coming and telling me that he and his wife had tried for years to have a child. And he wished it was him instead of her because he loved her and he did not want her to be, excuse me, sad about being incapable of producing a child. Well, the upshot was they did it artificial, but seven years later, 
hello, they got a little bundle of boy joy there. So I think what it is, is that when you feel helpless, aka hopeless, you need to stop that from dominating your feelings and dominating your life. As trite as it sounds from Anna, I think that's what the name of the uh, Broadway musical was based on the cartoon. The sun will always come out tomorrow. You have to have that kind of mindset that no matter how bad it is today, tomorrow is a new day. But you have to give it a chance. When when Barry was finally diagnosed with Alzheimer's, my world had already come to an, uh, a halt. And now it came to a, a screeching stop. And all the experts told me to dump them somewhere and then go on with my life. But I didn't do that because it was all for one and one for all. So when you really feel helpless or feel like you're only hanging by a thread, just remember this. You have the power to change it. You just have to make up your mind to do it. Yes, absolutely agree, Lillian. It is a mindset. And I have said that in my group, hashtag kick Alzheimer's ass movement, which I want to do a plug for. I uh, welcome everyone to join because you will hear uh, the show and I do videos in there that I don't do anywhere else. It is a mindset. You And I had to come to that point, Lillian, myself. I had to come to that point. Probably it really hit me and five years ago, but really two years ago, that I learned, the light finally went on in my head, that I am responsible for my own happiness. I am responsible for my power and how I use my power. So I chose to step into the happiness, step into my own power. You know, Matt could not make me happy um, probably the last five years. I had to find happiness in myself in other ways. Does it change the situation that your loved one or your pet is going to die? No, it doesn't. But it gives you a different perspective on things. And you need to change the perspective of how you look at it. You know, watching your loved one deteriorate and die, let's face it, it sucks. It's not um, a positive situation. But with help, you can do it. I was determined, folks, that I was not going to let this monster called Alzheimer's take me down also. It almost did. I was in a very deep, dark rabbit hole. And I really had suicidal thoughts about railroad tracks. And that's the truth. And I had to come out fighting. And I said, wait a minute, Betsy, get a grip on yourself. Of course, I would never have left Matt and Josh. But the, this was going on in my head. How do the railroad tracks feel in the summer versus the winter? I work right by them. And I said, oh, no, this disease cannot destroy me. I have too much work to do. There's too much work that needs to be done. And folks, when you think outside of yourself and when you go help someone else, you will feel better. And there's nothing wrong. And I'm going to say this every week and going for professional help, taking an antidepressant, taking an anti-anxiety medication. There is nothing wrong with that. So if and you go out that, and smell the air. Yes. Have a tree if it's going to make you kick the tree if it makes you feel better. Yes. Scream and shout if it's going to make you. Rip up turfs or grass if it's going to hurt you. Trust me, most of the neighbors have gone through their own periods of depression. And they all know what it's like to lose a loved one. But more importantly, they all know what it means to hit a brick wall. 
And yes. the idea is, is what you're going to do once you hit that brick wall. My son used brick wall to protect himself from bullies. So how are you going to use your brick wall? That's a good one. That's right. You know, I, I had it. I just had to have it in my mind that, and I also had Josh to uh, care for that I could not let this uh, monster Alzheimer's destroy me. That gives Alzheimer's too much power. And I look at Alzheimer's as a monster. I'm not giving that monster the power. I'm going to kick his butt. And so how do I kick Alzheimer's butt? Because, you know, um, in my mind, I think of it as a monster. I raise awareness. I try to help caregivers. I try to inspire caregivers. I post about Alzheimer's. This is my way of kicking Alzheimer's butt because I'm sounding the alarm and saying, yes, folks, you could get this early. No one's immune and bringing awareness. And apparently I post too much because I'm in Facebook jail. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll keep posting for you. If yes. you're of religious bent, there are two ways you can look at this. First one is Jonah and the whale. Mm -hmm. And you consider the whale the Alzheimer's. And we all know Jonah survived the whale. And the second one is Job. Yes. And I like Job myself. Job and I have gone back a long way. And Job always helps me. And I'm not, I'm a... Huh. I'm an atheist, but I still go back to Job. Figure that one out. But anyway, I go back to Job because Job helps me put things into perspective of what is really important, what I need to focus on, who I need to speak to, and to understand that in the end, it's only I and the universe. And they don't call depression the stake pit for nothing because once you get down there, it's a long, slow climb to come back up into the light. You're feeling depressed? Go out and kick a ball. Yeah. I have a friend who's bipolar and she doesn't like taking her medication. So one day she's up and the next day she's down. That is not the way to go through life. I mean, all those days she's down, let's see, there's what, 362 days in a year, 365 days in a year. So I'll get out my handy dandy calculator here. 365 divided by two. She wastes 182, 182.5 days of the year. Do you really have that much time to waste? In 10 years, you've wasted 1,825 days of your life. Trust me, there are people out there with cancer mm -hmm. who would give their right arm to have those 1,825 days extra in their life. That's right. Or Alzheimer's patients who would give anything just to have 1,825 days worth of clear thinking. And I'll tell you something else. I was told a long time ago to count my blessings. There's always somebody else worse off than you are. So count your blessings. So no matter how bad or how hopeless or how despairing you are, there's always somebody off worse than you. And if you want to look at it as a pleasant thought, go right ahead. Nobody's stopping you. Because you're the only one who can solve your problems. There's no white knight or black knight or purple or yellow or multicolor knight or transgender knight who's going to come along and solve your problems. You're the only one who can lift yourself out of your depression because you're the only one who puts yourself in it. Yes, that's hard, cold truth, and you don't want me saying that. 
and you don't want me pointing the finger at you saying you're the responsible for what you turn out to be every second of your life. Hey, it only took me 40, 50 years to figure that one out, folks. Not anything you're, you're given by your parents or you learn in school. And if you're lucky, you may learn it earlier. But if you don't, welcome to the club of people in their 60s and 70s who finally figure it out. Yes. They haven't I'm eradicated what? Alzheimer's. They haven't eradicated rheumatoid arthritis. They haven't eradicated systemic lupus or MS or any of those diseases that we have been fighting in the 20th century but you have to move forward because if you stand still you surely will fall to your knees very good advice though and i agree 100 percent. and when you do go to a counselor you yourself have to do the work you could go to the best clinics the best top-notch counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists, but if you yourself don't want to do the hardcore self-improvement work, you're wasting your time. You have to want to help yourself. That's what it comes down to, Lillian. You have to want to help yourself. You have to say, you know what? You have your strength. You have the power in you to change your perspective. Now, my friend, Marsha Burr, and I love you, Marsha. If you're listening, Brian, this is on too. Um, Marsha told me about the happy place when I met Marsha. I thought she was nuts. How can you have a happy place in the midst of Dementiaville? And I found out for myself. I had learned for myself. Yes, you can find the happy place. And you know what, folks? If you're a caregiver, no matter who you're caregiving for, your mood affects them. Your mood affects your loved one. So if you're and cranky, you know. yes. Cranky and irritable, they're gonna they're gonna feel that energy and they're gonna be cranky and irritable. You and have to all thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want that. And you have to want to it comes down to Lillian, people have to want to help themselves. And I find that a lot of people, I call them energy drainers, they just want to complain. they they would complain if you're hung with the new rope. They just want to complain instead of helping themselves. Your life, and people might take offense to this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Your life is your own life. It's separate from your loved one. Matt's journey, it was separate from mine. And I used to, I was feeling guilty last year of enjoying doing a radio show and good things were happening. And someone helped me put in perspective. So let me put in perspective for the viewers and listeners. Your life is yours. Your journey is your own journey. If you are in a relationship or whoever you're with, they have their own separate journey. You're allowed to enjoy life. You're in, allowed to have blessings come into your life and enjoy them, even though your loved one is at the end of their journey. I had to learn that myself, and, and I had to accept it myself. It wasn't easy. Is, is any of this easy? Of course not. It's hard work. It was work getting out of that rabbit hole. And I'll tell you, folks, I never want to go back in that rabbit hole. And I can't because you know what? I'm going to be 63 in December. So according to the Bible, if you live to 70, that's a gift. Anything after 70 is a bonus. I don't have time to waste being depressed. I don't have time to waste feeling sorry for myself. I want to help people. That's my mission. This is why I do this show. This is why I do chatting with Betsy. This is why I have... Uh, hashtag Nick Alzheimer's ass movement. I want to help people. And when I help people, that does make me feel better. But I found my gifts and I found my uh, talent and I want to use it. And you need to find your passion and your talent and use that to help others. You'll feel better. Remember that adage you we used to get handed back in the 50s and 60s? God helps those who help themselves. Think about yeah. it. It's their way, our parents' way of telling us, if you need help, ask for it. It will come. But if you don't ask, then you wallow in your own misery. If you listen to some of the other adages that have been passed down from generations or some of the little ditties that come along when you're a kid, 
I feel so bad. I'm so blue. I'm going into the garden and dig a worm, big, fat, juicy ones, little well-known ones, and then I'll throw myself in and bury myself. There's a reason why people are saying that. They're trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that in order for you to become successful, to be happy, to be able to deal with life, you first have to deal with your inner life. And if you cannot get yourself together, you can't get your soul together, whatever it is, then the rest of you is just not going to fall into place. This I do know. You have to work at being a good person every day. You have to work at wanting to be happy for yourself. You want to work that no matter what happens around you, you're a good, kind, loving person. Tell yourself, I love you. Because if you don't tell yourself, I love you, nobody else will either. It's you who make the difference. That's right. That's right. Uh, says, yes, speak the truth about complainer. Marsha Burr said, I've heard it said that God can move mountains, but you better bring your shovel. <laughs> hey, Marsha. Yes, uh, you have to love yourself. And I've been learning this because before you could love someone else, you had to love yourself. And if you don't accept yourself with your own flaws, no one else is going to. Same true with like. You don't like yourself? Right. And I've heard a lot of people say, I don't like myself. And I feel like saying, well, do something and change it. Because if you can't live with yourself, nobody else will either. Because whatever is inside you will come out. You know, in the paranormal, they talk about these black clouds and you need to stay away from the black shadows. Well, if you don't like yourself, your black shadow will come out and scare other people away. They will see it as your halo around you. That's right. And negative brings negative and positive attracts positive. And you know, I'm not a Pollyanna. You could ask my mother. I am not a Pollyanna. It took me until 60 years old to finally have a positive outlook on life and a lot of self work uh, work. And believe me, folks, it's a battle for me every day. You know, people used to think when I was start to do videos, oh, Betsy, you're, you know, you're brave, you're confident. Uh, no, being brave had nothing to do with it. I was mad and I had to use my anger in a positive way so it didn't destroy me. If, <laughs> if you knew what work it takes for me to get in front of the camera, as self-conscious as I am, but I have to put my insecurities away for a cause I believe in. And I believe in raising awareness and helping people. And I, I really can't impress upon that enough. But once you get out of your own head and start helping others, you will feel better. Because, Absolutely. you know, you'll, you will just feel better. It's not all about you. You know, Lillian, I sing in groups and I'm not a, a belittling anybody. But you know what? The caregivers sometimes have to get over themselves and get out of their own way. I yeah. hear, oh, they forgot my anniversary. Oh, they forgot my birthday. You know what? They don't choose to forget it. They don't even know their own birthday. So you celebrate anyway. Oh, I can't celebrate. They don't remember. You celebrate anyway. You're in a facility. Well, now you can't. But at the pandemic, bring the party to them. I celebrated every birthday and every anniversary until Matt died because I life is to be celebrated. I was going to celebrate it whether he knew it or not. And I kept telling him, you know what? He liked it. He liked having his cake and ice cream. Keep it simple, folks. It's not complicated. People make things yeah. more complicated than what they should uh, be. It's not complicated. The caregiver needs to get over themselves. You just remind them. Hey, I used to tell Matt, hey, it's our anniversary today. Happy whatever year it was. And then I would remind him that his mother told me that life with him would not be easy. And he would laugh. Um, be humor. I, 
I have a, you do develop a dark sense of humor with this. It helped me. Find the humor. Find the joy. There's always something to be grateful for. And yes, I can say that. And you know what else I could say, Lillian? Even though Matt died and I watched him suffer, I feel so blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed that he progressed slowly. He knew Josh and I. Uh, well, he called me Booby, but I mean, he said Josh's name right up until he couldn't talk anymore. We were blessed in so many ways. If folks, instead of looking at what you don't have, which will make you depressed, look at what you do have. Look at what you have. Be thankful that you have running water. Be thankful you have clothes to wear if you had that. There's always something to be grateful for. And then believe me, it took me 60 years to learn that. So call me a slow learner. <laughs> well, we're all slow learners. And the other thing you, you really need to, to remember is even though you feel alone, you're not alone. There are a billion other caregivers out there who are trying to do whatever they believe is best and they do it to the best of their ability at all times and that's all you ask but really truly know this you really are not alone nobody is alone on this planet go out and talk to the bees talk to the flowers talk to the trees you'd be surprised what i talk to on my walks Guess what, folks? I really don't care whether the people in the cars think I'm crazy. I dance sometimes when I walk. I sing when I walk. You know why? Because it gets to a point where you can't hold it in. And to be very honest, you'll get sick. For the last 50, 60 years, whenever I get upset, I put it in my stomach. Whenever I felt helpless, I put it in my stomach and now at the ripe old age of 69, I have severe stomach problems because I put all my unhappiness and my stress in my stomach. You know what I tell my grandson? You're upset? Kick the ground. Take a run. Bounce a ball. Play fiercely. Scream at the top of your lungs. Whatever you need to do, get it out of your system. Your body is not meant to take stress. It will tear it apart. It will kill your mind because you'll start self-doubting yourself and second-guessing yourself. Don't do that. Marsha Bear says, I've also heard it said that we resist persists. So if you build up a good defense, trust me, it's not going to go away. But you have to keep working on it. It's a relationship with yourself. And it's a relationship with the world. That's right. Stress will kill you, Lillian. There's a big percentage of caregivers who die before their loved one or after caregiving. They are sick because of the stress that they held in and their depression that they had. You have to do self-care. You have to... And it doesn't take much. It doesn't have to be expensive. Light a candle. Deep breathe. Go on YouTube for meditation. I used to sleep um, after Matt died. I listened to meditation as I was sleeping. There's so many meditations on YouTube. Positive thinking. Also, Lillian, I want to suggest I listen to inspirational speakers. I look at TED Talks. There's a lot of inspirational speakers out there. Les Brown is, is one of them phenomenal he came from poverty um and amazing story i look for inspirational speakers you will attract what you are because not only that if you have time go volunteer go work in a daycare center <laughs> go right. work in a health facility hospitals there are lots of kids in hospitals especially in the cancer section go work with some of the dogs Go to a shelter. Talk to the kids over there. You think you're bad off? Talk to the ones who are living with day-to-day um, -day hopelessness because they don't know how to dig themselves out of the pit that they find themselves. It's a pandemic. What are these people really doing? 
go to some of the churches and find out how they you can get involved some of them have overseas operations a lot of them are over in africa see if you can get involved that way you could always find something or someone to help lift you out but you have to purposely focus on that and say oh well lily you don't understand oh i understand plenty when I lost, when I left my first marriage, I was maybe this tall and I had a three-year-old child to take care of. And I wasn't prepared to go out into the world and work. I was just supposed to be barefoot and pregnant. So don't talk to me about stuff like that. I made sure he got a good education, put the clothes on his back, fed him, and he got into a top 10 art college, Parsons School of Design. So don't, on, on scholarship yet. So don't talk to me about it's hopeless because what it is is you have to get out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and do something. You have to get out of your pity party that you enjoy so much and do something. I've met parents with special needs kids back in the 60s, 70s who felt so badly about it. They would prostitute their child's problem so they can get people pitying them and giving them money support. That's how they handle it. I think that's pretty pitiful and you have to use your own child, but it's nothing new. They've been doing it well before the middle ages where they put kids out in the street, bruised or caught up or whatever to get and garner people's sympathy. You shouldn't be doing that. I don't care how tempted you are. It, it, it has to get better. And the only person who can make it better is you. You're the one, you're the captain of your ship. There's a poem, Captain O' Captain, with a, it, it was in a movie with uh, Robin Williams. And he was in a boys' school, and he was teaching the boys how to be strong. He was the captain of his own ship. And he's the only one, and you're the only one who can steer the rudder into what direction you want to go. That's exactly right. And sometimes people don't want to admit that. They want to someone to come along like you said lillian uh you know knight in shining armor and rescue them that's not how it happens folks you are responsible for your own happiness i wish it didn't take me so long to learn that but it did so now that i know it i am fine you know do i have tough moments at times sure everybody does you know what i used to do lillian i know i look like a crazy person in the car I used to drive to work. I would crank the music up and sing, or I would scream. I would cry, and I would get it out before I went to work. Holding stress in and your self-pity is going to destroy you. I don't want to be destroyed. I have too much work to do. There's too many people that need help out there. There's too, much, uh, there's too many people that need education. They need help to be inspired. You know what, folks? It's really easy for me to sit here at the Matt died and feel sorry for myself. But I wasn't going to do that because if Alzheimer's didn't destroy me when Matt was alive, I'm not going to let it destroy me after Matt died. I'm not going to let this monster win. I'm a fighter. You need to be a fighter. Sue Forenza says 35% of caregivers die. Marsha Barr says about 40 to 45 percent of dementia care partners die before their loved ones. Self-care is surviving that can lead to thriving and goes on to say, I think it's actually higher. I've read other studies that indicate this. So you guys don't want to become a statistic. You want to beat the system. Come on. How many times does a woman have to show the world that she's a rough, tough, ready to tumble lady? That's going to take the Marine Corps to get her, take her down. So you're not going to let a disease or an illness like dementia, Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. And listen up, folks. My dad had Parkinson's back in the 50s and 60s. And they were just beginning the stages of experimenting with L-DOPA. So don't tell me about not knowing what I'm talking about. Because I saw the relationship that it wrecked between him and my mother. And my mother never recovered for, from it. 
and she blamed him and mistreated him and abused him until the day he died. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, and don't you know if you're in a situation and someone has an illness in the family, don't make each other the enemy. It was, that's not really healthy to do. And that happened with Matt and I when his mom had Alzheimer's. And it took a while to, to repair you know, our relationship. And then, of course, as it's getting on track, Matt comes down with Alzheimer's. So don't waste years. Don't waste years being bitter and angry and that feeling of life isn't worth living because it is. And there are a lot of people that are in the grave that wish they were alive and enjoying life right now. That's and right. They'll come back and tell us. That's right. And I plan on enjoying my life, God willing. I plan on enjoying my life uh, for myself and carrying on because I promised Matt that I would. And that's what, you know, I want to do. My therapist said to me, Betsy, if you want to have a pity party, set your timer. And then pack it up and move it along. Don't be there all day. So you want to have a pity party? Go ahead and have one. Set your timer for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Pack it up. Move it along. And enjoy the day. And just enjoy something. A cup of coffee. A cup of tea. Relax and enjoy yourself. Now, I know caregivers are stressed for time. You don't have to tell me. I was a caregiver for many years. But if you could just get into the bathroom... Deep breathe, enjoy a cup of tea, enjoy a cup of coffee, do something for you. It's not selfish, people. Self-care is literally a matter of life and death. That's how Absolutely. serious I am. So why don't you give them the resources? Sure, Lillian. Uh, some, per some person wrote in a comment for me, and I appreciate it. Psychology Today, if you Google them, they also have a list of resources. I know they're a magazine, but they also offer a list of resources of people in your area. There's your a local community senior center that you can get free counseling. Well, I do in mine. Call them up. If you're a veteran, call up your Veterans Association. Check with the Alzheimer's Association. They could give you referrals. Uh, as you said last week, check with ARP. And see if uh, they can help you. Call up your local hospitals, your local mental health clinics. Sometimes they do a sliding scale fee where you pay according to your income. Reach Check out. the United Way. They used to do it where they would have you pay them back on a United on a sliding scale. And mm -hmm. United Way has been around for years. So they're a respectable organization, and they will help you get from A to B. Well, that reminds me, Lillian. Check with your Catholic charities and also Jewish family services. You don't have to be Catholic. You don't have to be Jewish. It's uh, just call them up and, or look them up on the web and see what they have to offer because they do offer actually uh, meals. I know someone who's getting a meal through Jewish Family Services. So Try calling up the AARP. They have a lot of services coming out, and you need to give them a ring and find out where in your district, your county, your neighborhood. And also check some of the after-school programs at your local high schools. They also offer counseling for veterans and seniors. In fact, a lot of the local communities still during the pandemic are offering these services and you need to look them up. I mean, if you look in what used to be the yellow pages of the phone book, they used to list all the services for seniors. Take advantage of them. Yes. They're being offered for free. So take advantage of them and then spread the word. Become a uh, info center for other seniors to let them know so they know what's out there because it's important. Yes, and also, as I mentioned last week, if you are employed or your spouse or partner and you have insurance through them, check their employee 
assistance program. Where I received eight free mental health visits. It could vary with your company. But check that out. Swallow your pride. Get off your rear end. And help yourself. That's what it comes down to. You need to help yourself. And don't worry about what the neighbors say. Because it doesn't affect your neighbors. And hey, yeah, it does. Because if your behavior is not quite right. It may lead to drastic bad behavior on your part, getting a gun, getting a knife, jumping off a building, jumping off a bridge. You're saying, oh, Lillian, don't be ridiculous. Yeah, well, I know 16-year-olds and 12-year-olds who walk to their bridge and jump off. Am I being ridiculous? They're caregiving from a mother or a father. And they see their young adolescent life di- di- disappearing down the tube. Their mother dies. So all of a sudden you have a 19-year-old boy taking care of a four-month-old baby. Is that being ridiculous? Think about it. Because that's what helplessness is all about. Passing on your responsibilities to somebody else. Because you're too busy feeling sorry for yourself. So not only are you ruining your life, but you're ruining your son or your daughter's life. I know when I was growing up, my mother was an alcoholic. So I was left to do a lot of the stuff during junior high and high school. Did I tell anybody? No, because there was no place you could go to. It was expected and demanded that if you were the daughter, you would take up the slack. Let me tell you something. I suffered a lot because of that. I lost my junior high and high school years because of that. Would have made much of a difference? Probably not. But the fact was, I had to come home every day after school and do all the things that my mother abdicated on because she was so busy feeling helpless and drunk all the time. Think about it. Good point, Lillian. And suicide is on the rise, folks, and among children. So young children. young children, we need to, to teach our sons and daughters it's okay to call for help. And the demand now for mental health is such on a rise that there is a waiting list now to see counselors. So if you need a counselor, I would immediately check into it because you might have a waiting list. So let's wrap it up, Petsy. Final sure. word? Yes help yourself love yourself and help yourself and if you need help or you want to ask or uh questions contact betsy at sloan betsy 31 at gmail.com it's skirting across the screen special edition Da-da-da-da. grieving with betsy Da-da-da-da. but or contact me lsc at passionate world talk radio so next week is another saturday one more week before we plunge into the month of september and we know that september leaves immediately over to thanksgiving oh wait we have an election don't i can't forget that that ought to be cute <laughs> and then from november thanksgiving is going to christmas and da, 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 da. oh that's for our piece of jolly good fellow for 2021 so fasten your seat belts folks it's going to get bumpier and more thrilling and we will all see you next saturday morning at 10 a.m so stay healthy wear those masks maintain that six feet distance and remember you're not alone that's right have a good week guys Bye. Thanks for watching.